Fujifilm shooters are going to hate me. Um, but uh, because of this camera, the Sony a7 IV, I was about to throw this Fuji X-T3 in the trash. But it's kind of redeemed itself with its video quality, so you get to live another day. Welcome to another video. This one's a bit exciting for me. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Sony a7 IV. Now, right off the bat, does it live up to the hype? Yes. If you're a Sony a7 III shooter, should you buy one? If you shoot video, yes. Is there a substantial difference between the Sony a7 IV and this a7 III? Yes, there is. And am I going to keep it? Yes, I will. So let's get into this video. At first, when all these rumors were coming up about the a7 IV, to be quite honest, I was done with Sony. Um, I liked the a7 III, but I hated the 8-bit video that came out of Sony, and so that's why I sold my Sony a6300 back in the day. Um, and my a7 III, I shot one video with that that you guys never saw, but I hated the 8-bit quality um, that came out of that camera, so I never used it for video. And then, as I expanded my camera gear lineup and I included things like Fujifilm, Canon, and Nikon, I could really, really see what um, others were saying about Sony colors and skin tones. And so I started to veer towards those other cameras over shooting this Sony a7 III. So in the history of my ownership of the a7 III, was it a good camera? Yes, it was perfect in photo, but you know, the post work, having to edit it to get the colors right, I hated that. And so. I stopped using it and to be quite honest, I was almost done with Sony. But then comes the Sony a7 IV. So what are the things that really got me to care about Sony again? And number one, uh, the 33 megapixels. I was already planning on getting a higher resolution camera. I was thinking about actually going GFX, but uh, that's a story for another day. Uh, so the 33 megapixels is a substantial increase over 24 megapixels, and that's what I was looking for. And so that was the number one differentiator. Number two, 10-bit video. Like I just said, the Sony a7 III and all Sony cameras that I'd used, the 8-bit bit video, I hated a lot and I didn't want to touch it. I tried the 10-bit video, you could see it in my Nikon Z5 review. I like it a lot. That was a big differentiator for me. Now this last one might seem like a small deal, but it was a very big deal for me. It was the fact that you can separate the photo settings and the video settings. And so I can set up my camera how I want to for photo. And then I have an independent switch to switch it to video. And when I do that, it keeps its own independent settings, which I know some other cameras can do, but the fact that I can get it in Sony, perfect. So this video is a little special for me. My friend Callie from the Nikon Z5 review, um, her birthday is coming up and she wanted to do a bit of a special shoot. Uh, she found this picture on Instagram and she was like, hey, maybe we should do this. I thought about it and this was about a year ago and I was just like, nah, I don't wanna get into all that. But when I bought this camera, I was thinking, hmm, I wanna do a shoot with it, but I wanna do something creative a little bit out of the norm. And so I remember that picture that she had showed me and I decided to put it together. It was a hell of a journey. You're going to see why, uh, but after countless of hours, I was able to put this dress together and we we're able to do the shoot. And in my opinion, it turned out pretty well. So sit back. This video is gonna be a little bit of a long one, but I promise you it'll be worth it. And again, if you appreciate the content that I'm putting out, please drop a like on this video, but most importantly, subscribe to this so that you can see my future comparisons between the Sony a7 IV and all cameras from all different other camera brands. Uh, but yeah, enjoy this video and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. What you need to get started if you're looking to do the same shoot is an Instax or Polaroid camera with 50 slides of film, or you can take the photos, place them in a Polaroid template on Canva and print them on photo paper, which is the route I took. This is where I encountered my first roadblock. Everything was going great until I found out that the print head on my Canon Pro 100 was clogged because I hadn't used it in so long. The shoot was in 24 hours, so fixing the print head was out of the question, so I rushed to the only camera store in the city that does photo printing to get it done. From then, I cut the photos, inserted the eyelids using a grommet tool, and connected the photos using key rings. This process legitimately took 8 hours straight. I'm so thankful I didn't use real Polaroids because they're very thick and inserting the eyelids was challenging enough even on thin photo paper. I tied a dress on the model using extra laces that I wasn't using and thankfully it all worked out. General operation and speed of the Sony a7 IV is a lot faster than the a7 III 
and the focusing is definitely stickier, but the a7 III was already good enough, so I wouldn't say that that's a major reason to upgrade. One thing that hasn't been improved, and frankly it's quite annoying, is that when you shoot strobes and you press the shutter button, there is a noticeable microsecond delay, so even though all of my photos are in focus, I'm still missing the transitional expressions I like to capture because this issue throws off my timing. Yes, it's a minor thing, but all my other cameras, including my super cheap Canon RP, doesn't do this. I've only had this camera for a little over a month, so I'll play around with the settings and see if I can get rid of this micro lag and report back to you in a future video. In terms of photo quality, I noticed that between the two Sonys with the exact same settings and lens, the shadows and blacks were being crushed a bit on the a7 III, whereas on the a7 IV it was more flat and natural looking, making it easier to color grade. The color science is slightly improved, but there isn't a major difference. You can see in the upcoming photos how the color science compares to the other cameras.
screen, the improved card slots, the new menu, and a deeper grip are all nice improvements and in my opinion warrant an upgrade, but for hybrid shooters, what should really get you excited is a 10-bit video. This isn't a video review, but trust me when I say that the quality coming out of the camera rivals that of the Sony A7S III. Knowing that most of you watching this video are going to be using this for hybrid shooting purposes, I believe that upgrading is going to be worth it for this reason alone. Looking at each improvement individually may not seem like a big deal, but the sum of its parts places this camera in a whole new other league compared to its predecessor. The only individuals who should be buying the A7 III should be strictly photo shooters or those who are on a tight budget.